So, now that we've defined a material stream for liquid water, what we're going to do is to start to build our block diagram. So, the first thing we're going to do is to think about pumps, and then about heaters. Then we'll define the methane material flow, and we're going to think about compressors and about heaters. Now, when you start to build your flow sheet, it is vitally important that you do not treat your process simulator like a video game. What you define on your process simulator has to have some engineering design behind it because it is meant to be a computational mirror of reality. And so we have to mirror on our process simulator, in effect, what we would actually do in a proper design. And I'll illustrate this in a number of ways as we go on. Now, if you remember from your block diagram, the first thing we were going to do is to pump the water to 25 bar. And so we have water here at 150 kilomoles per hour. We are going to go to our unit operation selection panel over here and select a pump. There is a pump on the fourth row down, fourth row down in the middle. So I'm going to single left click pump, drag that over to my flow sheet screen, reposition it slightly, and then I'll see it there on the flow sheet. Now, note it's highlighted red. Now, when unit operations are highlighted red, it means that they haven't been calculated. If they're highlighted yellow, they're incomplete. And when they go a sort of a gray color, that means they are complete. So let's see why this is incomplete and double click on it. When I double click on the pump, I will see that a specification window opens. A pump needs to have a material stream coming in, it needs to have a material stream coming out, and it needs energy in order to raise a pressure. And so it also needs an energy stream. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the liquid water stream as an inlet. As an outlet, we're going to directly specify a new material stream from here rather than creating one in the pallet and dropping it on to the um, flow sheet. So I'm going to call this P-100 outlet, just as a naming convention. And I'm going to give the energy stream a name P-100 energy. As soon as I press enter on here, the red traffic light goes to yellow and it says unknown duty. Now, there's a number of ways we can remedy this. We can either give the pump some energy, as you'll see on the flow sheet here, we have an energy stream appeared. We could, for example, type 50 kilowatts into that. That's not what we want to do though. What we want to do is we want to figure out how much energy is required for a certain pressure difference. And so what we're going to do is to single left click, double left click the outlet stream, we'll bring up the material stream um, selection box here, and in the pressure box, we're going to type 25 bar. So there's 25, down click, bar. Note that this goes green because it knows what chemical species are coming in. There's no chemical reactions made. The pump has water coming in, it'll have water coming out. Note that it's calculated a very small temperature rise here due to the mechanical action of the pump. And if we close that window, if we mouse over the energy stream, it has calculated that just under two and a half kilowatts of power are needed. So it's a very small amount of energy to raise the pressure of water from one to 25 bar, despite the fact that our water flow is 2.7 tons per hour. So here's the first thing to remember. Pumping liquids takes very little energy. Compressing gases takes a lot more energy. We'll see that in a minute. So what we're going to do next is to make some steam. Now we have water at 25 degrees C here, and ultimately we need to make steam at 900 degrees C. What we could do is just put in one heater taking our 25 degrees C water through to 900 degrees C steam. There's nothing wrong with that for a sketch of a flow sheet, but it's more educational to realize that actually, if you've got a great big boiler, then the heat exchange happens in a number of different steps. First of all, you preheat the liquid, and that is, happens in one heat exchanger. Then in a different heat exchanger, you boil. You effectively change phase. Then in a further heat exchanger, you add superheat. 
and what we are in effect producing is superheated steam. And so what we would need in reality is a minimum of three heat exchangers. On a plant, you would probably find that there would be a greater number of heat exchangers than just three, because typically the water preheating would be part of an energy integration scheme, which may involve a number of different heat exchangers taking heat at different temperature levels from different parts of a process. However, we're going to assume for the purposes of this tutorial that the heating stage for the water can be done in one step. So I'm going to specify three heaters. So I'm going to single left click a heater on the pallet over here, second row down in the middle, and drop it onto the flow sheet. I'm going to double left click it. As inlet, I'm going to specify P100 outlet. I'm going to say that my energy is E100 energy and the outlet is a material stream E100 out. Then what I'm going to do is to look at the traffic light system when I've pressed enter, and it says unknown delta P. Now don't forget that heat exchangers are large pieces of mechanical equipment. When you have fluid flowing through a tube bank, it will have a pressure drop associated with it. And even in a shortcut tool such as this, it is very useful to know what that pressure drop is, such that we can try and estimate what the total flow sheet pressure drop is going to be. So if we single left click on parameters, we're going to single left click on the delta P box here, and I'm going to say that roughly 0.2 bar of pressure is dropped across this heat exchanger. This is a very, very rough value, but it gives a rough approximation as to the accumulated pressure drop we might expect. So when I enter that value, the traffic light system goes from red to yellow, and now it says unknown duty. So in a similar way to the pump, it needs to figure out how much energy it needs. And also, in a similar way to the pump, we could either specify the energy within the material stream directly, sorry, within the energy stream directly here, or we could specify the energy by saying, raise the temperature of this stream from this temperature to this temperature which is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to close the heat exchanger definition box. We're going to double left click on E100 out, and we're going to put the temperature here at 100 degrees. Note that at 100 degrees, my vapor fraction is zero because of course the boiling point of water at 25 bar is not 100 degrees C. Let's say what we wanted to do was to calculate the boiling point of water at 25 bar. So I'm going to delete that temperature specification. I'm going to go to my vapor fraction specification box and type in zero. This will give me my boiling point. A vapor fraction of zero as it just changes away from zero is my boiling point. A vapor fraction of one for a pure species will also be my boiling point, but for a mixture will be my dew point, that temperature at which the first drop of liquid condenses. So for boiling, it's good practice to use zero and not one because it leads to less confusion when you think about mixtures. So if I specify the start of the phase change, I can see that actually the water boiling point is around 224 degrees C. Again, a very useful piece of information that's directly calculable from the process simulation package. So I'm now gonna close that window. So in a similar way, I'm now going to define another heater, which I'm gonna drop onto the flow sheet and this heater is going to be for the phase change. And the inlet for this is going to be E100 out. The energy stream is E101 energy. The outlet is E101 out. I'm going to give it a similar pressure drop, 0.2 bar. And again, we have that unknown duty being flagged. But this time, I'm going to say, right, the purpose of this heat exchanger is to change the phase completely. So I'm gonna specify a vapor fraction of one here, signifying that the boiling process is complete. Even though it's at the same temperature, Unisim will know now to apply the latent heat of, of um, the water to this calculation. And if we mouse over the energy button here, we can see we need slightly shy of 1.4 megawatts of thermal duty to change phase versus 642 kilowatts of sensible heat to heat the water from 25 degrees C to 230 odd degrees C. The final step is to add the superheat. And so I'm going to specify a further heater for the superheat. I'm gonna double left click on it. I'm going to put my entrance steam in here, my E102 energy, 
as a name for the energy stream and E102 outlet for the material stream. The pressure drop, again, I'm going to set to 0.2 bar and I'm going to ask Unisim to calculate the duty by specifying the outlet temperature of 900 degrees C. So there we go, 900 degrees. So here is the first of our sets of operations on our flow sheet. This is turning 25 degrees C water at one bar into 25 bar steam at 900 degrees C. And we've done so in recognizing the fact that the reality of this would take place in a minimum of three different heat exchangers. Something to heat the water up to its boiling point, something to change its phase, and something to provide superheat. Now what we're going to do is to examine the methane material stream. So I'm going to single left click the material stream. I'm going to drop that on the box, on the flow sheet. I'm going to double left click the stream and call this CH4. Now we've got the unknown flow rate problem again. So what we're going to do is to say, well, it's 100 kilomoles per hour of pure methane, mole fraction one. Unknown temperature, well, it's at 25 degrees C and a pressure of one bar or 100 kPa. So there is all the information we need now to define this methane stream. So I'm going to drag that methane stream up to there just to keep the flow sheet looking nice and tidy. So what we're going to do for this methane is first of all compress it to 25 bar and then heat it to 900 degrees C. Let's think of the compression step first. Now, one way to do this would be to select the compressor, which is this icon here on the fourth row on the right hand side, drag that on the flow sheet and specify it in a very similar way as we did this pump here. So if we double click on the compressor, we have our methane inlet, we have a K100 energy, and we have an outlet, which is going to be K100 out. Again, this says unknown duty, and we're going to resolve that problem by saying, I would like methane to be at 25 bar. So I'll double click on the outlet material stream and type in 2500 kPa. Press enter. And there we have the material stream fully defined. And we can see that Unisim has calculated for us a temperature of 364 and a half degrees C. Now herein lies the problem. Don't treat a process simulator as a video game. You have to keep tabs on reality. The reality is you would never have a compressor running that hot, especially with a flammable. So if you look at the mechanical design of compressors, typically their outlet temperature is limited to very, very roughly 140 to 150 degrees C. It's to do with how you lubricate the bearings in these large pieces of rotational or reciprocating machinery. So what you will almost always find are multi-stage compressors where you have one stage of compressor limited by its upper operating temperature of say 150, a heat exchanger known as an intercooler cooling the gas back down to whatever you can reasonably attain with cooling water or air, and then a further compression stage taking the gas pressure up another level. So we'll implement this here. So I'm not going to put that pressure specification of 25 bar on. I'm going to put an upper temperature specification of 150 degrees C. That is my assumption of the upper operating temperature of my compressor. And I can see that that will take methane from one bar to three and a half bar, which is a little less than what I require. So I'm going to close this window. I'm going to put a cooler as my next unit operation. Much in the same way as a heater, I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to put my inlet, my energy stream, and my outlet. And having defined those three streams, it will say an unknown delta pressure drop. So I'm going to say, let's say it's a 0.2 bar pressure drop, 20 kPa. And it's an unknown duty. And we're going to specify the duty as how much I can cool this methane stream with too. Let's say that I can cool my methane stream with air. Let's say my air's at 25 degrees C. Let's say my temperature approach as in how close I can get this stream to the air temperature, is about 20 degrees C for gas, gas. 
If it was gas liquid, it would be a little less. If it was liquid liquid, it'd be about 10 degrees C. So reasonably, I can call that 55 degrees C. Okay, then I add my next compression step. So here's my compressor. I'm gonna drop that on the flow sheet. I'm gonna have an inlet E103 outlet. I'm gonna have an energy stream definition. And I'm going to have my outlet material stream. An unknown duty is flagged, and I'm going to specify that as before by saying I would like an upper operating temperature, and that now gets me to eight and a half bar. Okay, so we've gone from three and a half bar to eight and a half bar. So we've roughly got a compression ratio of three-ish across each of our compressors. So we'll see that we might need two more stages to get to 25 bar. So I'm gonna add another cooler. I'm gonna double left click that. I'm going to put my gas stream in. I'm going to have a an energy stream. I'm going to have an outlet stream. And it's going to have an unknown delta P. So I'm going to go to parameters and hit 20 kPa pressure drop. And again, I'm going to say, well, it's air cooled. Let's assume temperature approach 20 degrees C. Let's say I can cool it to 55 degrees. Okay. And we do the same process again. So next compression stage, drop it onto the flow sheet, E104 out. We have my energy. We have the material stream outlet. We have the unknown duty error again. And I'm going to put in my upper temperature limit of 150 degrees C and see what pressure that gives me. 21 bar. Okay, so if I put in 25 bar, what temperature does it calculate? 168.6. That may or may not be attainable, but one could imagine that if we slackened off the temperature constraint a little bit on each of the compression steps, so to say took it to 155, made those heat exchanges in between each step, which we term the intercoolers, a little more efficient, so it's a 15 degrees at sea approach, we could probably get this 25 bar compression within these three compression steps. So I'm going to leave that as an approximation to the process as it stands. So three compression steps gives me my methane at um, 25 bar. However, don't forget that I need to be able to match it to the pressure of the steam and that I have a, a further heating system to apply in order to actually get that pressure to get to the temperature correct. And so I'm going to re-specify this pressure here to allow for the pressure drop of the heat exchanger that's about to be put in. So I'm gonna put in a heater. I'm gonna double left click that. We're going to feed the compressed methane. We're gonna put in an energy stream. We're gonna have a material stream outlet. We're gonna have our pressure drop here as 20 kPa. We're gonna have an unknown duty, but we're gonna satisfy that by specifying a temperature of 900 degrees. Okay, so now that corresponds to the set of operations required to get methane at 900 degrees C. Now let's just check, mouse over the material stream here, 900 degrees C, 25 bar, 100 kilogram moles per hour. Mouse over the steam, 900 degrees C, 25 bar, 150 kilomoles per hour. So that defines both of the material streams that we need. And in doing so, we've specified heaters, coolers, pumps, and compressors.